Dave here, how are you? Today is, in Australia, the 18th of November 2018. I'm hoping everyone is well. <clears throat> and uh, you'll see here, this is uh, Plush Barry. Now, Barry was given to me at the uh, Timber and Working Wood Show, and it was quite a surprise. Now, there's a couple of things talking about the show, and I'd like to say thank you. Let's let's do that right now. I'll jump in and say thank you to these people here. I'll switch this over. So that's Julia Piccoli and John Lafferty, Derek Lark, Daryl Wells, Darren Allen and Nicola Walsh, Greg Wyatt, uh, Luke Wilson from TBDCNC, Susan Brownlow, Andrew Haverlive, Wayne and Sheila Jones, Johannes Moa, Deb and Cara, Stephen Warbank. So thank you very much to all of those people. Um, it was a surprise. I was not expecting it. And also, of course, my wife, who uh, was sneaking around behind my back and put poor old Barry on the dining room table and had to take photos because this was a handmade copy. It's, uh, it's Barry all over. And if you're interested, look, let's get this part out of the way quickly. Let's see if I've got some um, video here of Barry actually meeting Plush Barry. Now, he doesn't understand that this is actually a Disney-style Barry, and Disney-style animals don't have any bits. So Barry was <laughs> desperate to start sniffing and finding bits to sniff. But, no. See? <laughs> Still looking. So there we go. That was that. So again, thank you very much. Now, I know that is not hard burnishing, but I thought I'd just say thank you. And uh, that's terrific. Thank you so much. I'm going to do a quick read down the side here as we're getting into it. Barry Doxy, hi all. Chris Sullivan, does anyone know of any good tube videos on how to build an office desk? Just use pipe and pipe fittings, please. I have no idea. Use, use your brains. Be creative. Do something yourself. Uh, Rob Hampton, morning all. Michael Christopher's morning, everyone. David Rollins, good morning from Canberra, Dave. G'day, David, how are you? Uh, Gara Mitrovic, good morning, people. Ken Wills, hi, everyone. G'day, Ken. Now, Ken, uh, you made comment that you did not receive the free tickets um, on the Thursday. I'm hoping that they had arrived. And as I said, uh, everyone else got there. So if you could let me know if they, if they eventually arrived, because I did pay special postage to get them within two days. Um, Stephen, greetings from summer of Victoria. John Ang, cheers mate from sunny F F Florida in the States. Gillies, uh, lovely, thank you for the products. Basic kit in fantastic, my, it is fantastic. My seller should contact you soon. Wow, Darren Allen, morning Dave. Chris Smith, hi Dave. Mark Bongers, morning all. Okay, I'm gonna quickly move on to this part, which is the main part of the project. This guy's gonna hop down here for the moment. You might just, <laughs> let's go see if I can get him sitting in the corner. Now, I have a few different things set up with the cameras today. There's the chat hopping, popping up there. So you can see the chat and you can see me down here in the, the, this corner down here. Remember, it's back to front for me. So this is a camera that I've got set up across the bench. Now, let's see if I can show you uh, close up cam. There we go. This is going to be, I've transitioned it over. I just keep on looking at one point, not the other. So this is going to let me show you things in another method. This is in, not instead of Carl Cam. Carl Cam is still up there. Now this is a piece of camphor laurel. Let me see if I can get it in closer for you. That I have already put some hard burnishing oil on. Now I'm going to run through this. This is a smaller piece. This isn't the big piece that I've finished. I'm going to run through sanding this and then doing the oil. Now I've already put the first coat of oil on this so we're going to burnish this after i've done it so let's do that this is this is how it's come from the guys with their um their thickness or the, or their drum sander and i'm going to go through the rest of it let's see if i can get a better image for you here maybe carl cam there we go i'm going to switch that one over there we go you can see it there. Also, you can see it. I've got this on. I made a few benches during the week, and this one is from Formply. And I'll quickly talk about this. Um, Formply is great, but the problem with it is as soon as you cut the rebates or the dados, 
to put the track and the cushion strips in. It absorbs moisture and it will bow. Form ply is not really designed to have the finish removed from it on the outside. It's, uh, it's been seasoned, dried, sealed. Now, so as soon as you break that seal on one side and not the other, it will, it will um, bow. So there you go. If you wanted to do one with form ply, what you could do is just do the T-track, don't do the cushion strips. And that would probably get you out of strife. All right, first thing, this is going to be a little bit noisy. We're going to use the Rotex. I'm going to throw the eye muffs on. And you may want to turn the sound down a little bit. Is the sound coming through okay, guys? If you can let me know what the sound's like. 74 people watching already, you're kidding me. Okay, so this is, this is going to be a good show about hard burnishing. Uh, I'm going to be using organ oils, hard burnishing oil. Let me see if you can see it up there. Other way around, David, this way. I'll put it up near the close-up cam as well, or even over to this one. Sound is great. Okay, thank you. All right, now remember, you may want to turn the sound down just a little. I always, I always talk really loud when I put the earmuffs on. You know, I talk, oh, you'd reckon I would have learnt by now, but no, never. Here we go. I'm going to put these on, and it will be noisy. That's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. So I'm pretty happy. to See how the, uh, the cushion strip works fantastic. Stops you having to clamp things down. What plywood has with the stand... Um, it's form ply. Yes, that's correct. All right. Um, so that's the 80 grit that I've hit it with. I'm going to go through 120. Again, it's not too noisy. I must snap on the nose bridge. No, I haven't had my I must snap. Have you had it happen, Steve? Uh, that's 80. I'm going to go to 120. A bit of 120 there. Uh, where are we? So I'm trusting everyone's had a good week. Um, last week, the show was broadcast from the Timber and Working Wood Show, which was great. I'll tell you what, the quality of the video would have been a whole lot better. And that's because I was going out through 4G and it was punching it out at, you know, full HD, which was great. Um, so good, as a matter of fact, that Derek Lark ran out of uh, ran out of uh, data on his phone plan <laughs> on his way. I think uh, was it that week, or it might have been the week before. Anyway, I think it probably was the the week that. So I'm waffling here. I think it was the Wood Dust show that he ran out of data. But anyway, not to worry. What's this? Warns of problems with. Uh, Russ, watch again later. Dave warns of problems with it. Yes, there are some problems with it. I will show you in a second, but I'm also going to show you something pretty amazing with this top and the path guide system. So remind me if I haven't said it. 
what are we at? Quarter past. These blue eyes back on again. 120 grit. This is an amazing machine. I had someone say the other day, um, maybe in a group or, or somewhere else, they said, uh, why, is the, why is the Rotex uh, so expensive? And the, this person said to him, you haven't used one, have you? <laughs> and that's all I can say. If you haven't used one, well then, yeah, they're brilliant. 180 grit is my next grit. You know, I always go 80, 120, 180, 240, 320 if I can and then 400 right at the end but instead of going 400 right at the end this time I'm going to go 800 and I'll show you why in a second here we go this is really easy it's not hard Dave how do you find the new hose compared to the older type hose it is oh, chalk and cheese look at this look at this it's I love it it's, it doesn't get tangled the only downside with the Bluetooth here you go the only downside with the Bluetooth is this, if you keep it right up near here, it catches. So I've put the Bluetooth switch further down the hose now. Oh, the other thing with the hose, you can plug them together. So I can plug the, I'll show you. Oh, I'm slowing up a little bit here, aren't I? Okay, so this is the, this is my 36 millimeter hose, this one. And this is the hose off the 27 that goes into the dust extractor. They now push together, so I can extend the hose as far as I want, which is great. Okay, plug it back in. Um, what about you, Jim? How, how have you found it? Sorry you're late, Luke. Okay. Matthew, one day I should really look into getting a Rotex style Santa. Another story for the grandchild, grandkids. Yeah. Um, Rick Garnish, this week was better than last week when I fed my little finger into a router cutter. On my own fault. The eye muffs did me no good then. Oh, dearie me. I don't know. You've got to be careful. It's just, it's so easy. It's so easy. It really is. Yeah. My, my um, son-in-law uh, lost the top off one finger. And uh, it was with a, with a push bike. He got it caught between the chain and the sprocket when he was a kid. Um, anyway, the top's gone. And it's his favorite trick to get around and show his kids, you know, his finger halfway up his nose but it's just the the bump of it uh it's a 150 rotex now there's other companies make a similar machine you can get one from triton you can get one from bosch but they're the previous design basically of this one um this one is uh they, the previous model festool used to was look just like the new bosch and the new triton but this thing is is gone past all that and it's just beautiful all righty uh, the Rotex and Outstanding Santa, about to buy one, but had no real food feedback. Thank you. Uh, Dave, tickets have oh, turned up. Good. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to go through with 180 this time. Here we go. Switch cameras as well. I'll switch it over to this one over the side here so you can have a quick look. And I'll show you where we're up to with 180 grit. I'll hang this on the side of the machine. It's just beautiful. Okay, the next one I'm going to do is 220. Yep, there's a bit of 220. And I'll leave it down here for you to watch if you want. A bit easier. Uh, a standard random orbit is... I'll show you. I'll show you. If I can find a pencil, I will show you. Right at this second. 
and I'll probably not be able to find a pencil. Hold on, I'll have a look over here in the cupboard. <coughs> There's a pencil. Right. I'm going to put it into ordinary... I'll do it to this camera right in front of me. Um, there we go. All right. Now, I'm going to aim this at you there. Or should I go to this camera on the side? You know what? It might be better if I go to that camera on the side. I'm being a little bit... I don't have time to do the mucking around. But anyway, here we go. Okay, so I've got it on the side there. And I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to flick it over to ordinary random orbit. See, it can turn like that and move the transition to there. Okay, you can see it turns easily. When I turn it on, I'm going to put this pencil here and you'll see it's got a five millimeter orbit. Here we go. Okay, you see that? So the pencil has swirled at a five millimeter orbit. Now, when I turn it onto geared mode, which is a Rotex style, you could call it if you wish, it's going to lock in. It's going to be a crazy pattern. I will do it on the inside here. You ready? See the difference? There's a big difference. Yeah, you will see things move around because it's a very slow upload on my channel here. But leaving it like that, you should be able to see the difference. Now, it's not the autofocus. It's just that it's a long time. Um, it's, it's a very, very, very slow connection. There we go. Go back to that one. So I uploaded about 0.8 of a megabyte per second. Now, when I was doing the live stream, it was probably uploading at around about 10 meg a second. You know, so that's why I had a nice clean show. Um, this one, uh, it is like a etch sketch -a graph or a etch -a sketch whatever you want to call it. Um, I was going to just have a quick drink of organ oil, but uh, no, I'll drink lemonade. Where's that? Where have I put it? It's funny when you're doing something, you just forget where the hell you are. You grab the wrong thing. I've got a butterfly in here with me. All right. Um, all right. Let's have a quick break from the uh, burnishing for a second. And we'll jump into something that's been happening during the week. Um, trampoline. Here we go. I, uh, I set up a trampoline during the week for the grandchildren. And because we've got a fair bit of a slope on the property here, I cut the legs. I was going to dig holes and try and live it up. I thought, oh, no, too much marking around. So it was quicker for me to just jump in and do a, a couple of legs. And then I asked the grandchildren to jump on it and have a go, see what they thought. So I think that's an approval. What do you reckon? They, they seem to enjoy it. Uh, where are we next? And then after I set it up, this guy came in and saw me. What are you doing on the roof of my car? Hey. <laughs> so, I've just come down the hose the trailer out and this guy's landed straight on my car. He's a, he's a uh, cuckoo dove. There you go. Very, very friendly. So, <laughs> what a life. What a life. All right, where are we up to? Okay, um, I'm just reading down through the side here. I've got all this stuff. Wrong toy, sorry. Um, Richard, um, Spirograph, Chris Sullivan. We are now getting thunder and lightning outside, right? Russ, the 150 would be a six inch disc and the 125. Yes, indeed it is. Very well done. Good metric conversion to Imperial. Uh, Luke Wilson, great demonstration. Thanks, thanks Luke and Barry. Uh, let me see what else have we got down here, down the side. Let's keep going with uh, let's keep going with the Rotex demonstration. 
Now I needed to go to 220. I've got a little bit of uh, lead graphite on there. I don't think it's going to worry me too much. Pop these back on. And notice there's no dust. That's the great thing about this. I, people say, why do you do it? Why do you buy these? Uh, a great day next Tuesday. Thank you very much, Wayne. Thanks. Okay, I'll keep going and I'll, I'll leave it in that so you can watch it down in the corner and you can watch it from the front. In Rotex mode still. I'm not, that's, that's 220 grit. And I'll tell you, it's magic. Now, I'm gonna show you how this works. What you do is you use this stuff. This is organ oils, hard burnishing oil. I put it over there. Hard burnishing oil. So you can see it down the corner. And the hardwoods, and this is a hardwood, but it's a, it's kind of a soft hardwood. There's one of those things that's a bit tricky for a lot of people. For hardwoods, you put it on and then leave it for about three hours, I think it says. Hold on, let me have a quick look. For a satin finish. With a brush, apply two coats of oil, two to three hours apart on hardwoods, half an hour apart on softwoods. So I'm going to, I've already cheated, I've done the other side, and I'm going to be ready to create the slurry. So I'll put the oil on. Now the other thing is, this is exothermic, which means it's self-combust. So see these things here, and I made a comment on Instagram the other week about exothermic stuff. What you do is any rags that you use with this or other stuff that's exothermic, and uh, thermic, uh, I think a lot of Libran stuff is, you open it up and let it dry out. Put it outside on the lawn or whatever, but you open it up and let it dry out. Don't bunch them up and leave them sit on the bench in your workshop because it may catch fire on its own. They self-combust. I haven't seen it happen, but they warn you, so you know, white temp fate and uh, next thing you know no workshop and it's, everyone will be very sad a bit more um, Darren Moore nice to meet you and John last week at the Canberra show I was thank you uh, Russell wrote happy birthday Dave 39 has never looked so good I'm not I'm not I'm not uh, having a birthday quite yet it's soon okay here we go I think we need to go to Carl Camp for this one where are we Carl Cam, Carl Cam. There we go. Switch her over. How's that? Now, a lot of people will look at this. Oh, it's got a really strong citrus smell because organ oil is all natural product. And I met the guy from Prep who uh, distributes organ oil down at the show on the weekend. And uh, he said, Dave, take one of these cans with you and have a play with it. See if you like it. Because I've never used it before. And I thought, you know what? Why not? There we go. That's that. Now it says within... I've got to leave that for two to three hours. And uh, let's have a look. I've done that and then I left it. And then I put a second coat. And that's where I'm up to now. So this is ready to burnish. Now it says you should do it within 15 minutes. I haven't got to it within 15 minutes. It's been a little bit late. Now I'm going to see if it's going to do it anyway. And I'm going to use 800 fleece, which of course is spelled V-L-I-E-S. And why am I going to do that? Because I can. Ah, where is it? I've got a piece of fleece here. This is Festool fleece. There we go. Blies, it's an aluminium mesh. Actually, I'm going to use the other sander, my orbital sander. 
Put the Rotex there. Get the 125. Oh, sorry, this is a 150. Five uh, orbit, five millimeters in its stroke or orbit. That's the little circles. And I'm going to put this on here. Now they say to build up a slurry. And what it does, it fills, fills these little cracks. Now the pith in the middle of the tree here, this part, you would be best digging that out. I'm doing this for a demonstration, but you'd be best digging that out and filling it up with epoxy. The bigger ones also you'd fill, but the smaller cracks there like that, and this one, they will fill up. Now I don't need to wear the earmuffs for this. We'll just... I'm going to start furnishing it. Just starting to come up over here. Now I can feel that gritting up a little bit, and I'm getting a little bit of a build up on the paper, not on the paper, on the um on the fleece right there. I'm going to cheat and put a little bit more on because I've left it a little bit longer than 15 minutes. So I'm going to put a little bit more on this side and start straight away. There we go. Now be careful. If you put too much on, it bogs up. It's like, the, um, it's like wax. If you put too much on, it, it melts into a heavy deposit in one spot and that's a pain. That's nice. What I'm going to do now also is I'm going to whip that paper, the uh, fleece off and I'm going to put some 320 paper on and see if I can build it up. Then I'll, then I'll get back over onto that. 320, what have we got? 120, 180, 12. Is that 320? That's 220, that's not fine enough for me yet. 220. Ah, oh, come on, come on, come on, David. Where are they? What's that one? It's still 220. You know, I keep on saying to people, you know, I always make sure that I'm totally ready. 320 found some. <laughs> I got out of jail then, didn't I? Okay, I'm going to pop this on now. Instead of it going, have a look at the, what I've got here. So instead of me lining up with the whole pattern, I'm going to offset it. So that it doesn't have, so it blocks it. So it's going to keep the keep the slurry on there. See how we go. That's starting to grab. That's good. I can see it building up here. Can you see those deposits? And the cracks are starting to fill.
paper. See that on the paper? So it's building up. You can clean the paper off using uh, some... Uh, a, I'm not going to say because I forgot to read that part, but you can clean the paper off as you're going. But it's essential that it builds up on there and pushes it into the cracks. Now you can see here, those cracks are pretty much full. These ones are bigger, as I said before, you'd really want to try and fill these with an, a, a, an epoxy. Um, the question also, why did I switch to the ETS instead of the Rotex? This is a lighter machine and also when I'm doing this part, I don't want the aggressiveness of the Rotex. Um, they're both a five millimeter stroke. This, I should really be using a three millimeter stroke on this when I'm going up through the grade, but um, five is okay. It's still, it'll still do it. Um, eventually I'm gonna get a two millimeter stroke machine and that would be even better. Now talking about the rags, I'm gonna take these over here, put them on the sink, so I have a stainless steel sink and the, uh, the cabinet above it also is metal. So they're out of the way for me. And now it also says between each coat, or sorry, between each sanding, as you're going up through your grits, it's a good idea to rub it down with, and you can see why. See, see that coming up? I don't want that sitting on there. I, I, now I've done the first basic, Basically, the first lot of sanding I've done with a hard burnishing oil is, is the burn, it's pushing the oil into the cracks. I don't really want that staying there. So I'm going to rub off the excess stuff. All the other stuff is kind of soaked in to the timber and it'll be fine. The instructions are pretty good. I'll move that around a little bit. Oh, it's a bit of work. I think I'm going to go to the 800 now. I jumped in a little early with the fleece. Now the other thing is with hard burnishing, you can do bench tops with it and you must do both sides to seal it. And then you leave it seven days before you hit it with any water. And they reckon it's great for bench tops as well. So, yeah, I don't know, but, um, I reckon it'll be all right. All right, let's put the fleece on. And go again. Oh, that's nice. It's coming up well. Okay, now my mother-in-law was over here the other day and she was having a look, she said, oh, it's lovely. And I said, yeah, I haven't finished. I've got to take it up through more sanding. She said, oh, no, you can't sand it. It's, it looks beautiful. I, and I agree, it does look lovely. But what I'm going to do, you're going to put some 1200. Let's see how we go with the 1200. This is 1200 granite. What do we got here? Who makes the two millimeter stroke sander? Lost Wits, it's a... Um... Of course you can, thanks Jim. I'm, I'm interested, I'm just reading Jim's comment there. Um, you can scrape off the paper and use as filler in large cracks and burnish in. But who makes the two millimeter stroke sander? Festool, of course. <laughs> they do a, a two millimeter in their 125 range and their cordless range. So I'm looking at getting one of the cordless ones soon. Uh, I've seen a sponge with teak oil catch fire. It's pretty incredible, isn't it? Um, Merca and Festool both do a two and a half sanders, uh, work really well in the automotive trade. Jim, uh, the air tools. Okay, Jay Parra, oh my God, I'm late. Call me Cap Captain Corner, off you go, Jay Parra. Uh, there's air tools, da 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 da, Mark Christopher's into the corner last I didn't realize Festool did smaller than three millimeters. I bought a three millimeter ETS second hand as an apprentice. Best thing until 
the plug it went pop and exploded. You can hardwire them if you wish. Let me get this one done. 1200. Rub that off as well. And it'll be one more lot with the sander after I rub this excess off. So you notice over in this corner here, it was bogging a little bit. It's just that's where the deposits were happening. There's a little spot just here as well. It's looking pretty good. This is going to put a little bit more deposit back on, but I think it'll be okay. Okay, now, that's starting to get a sheen. I think if I leave that for another day or so, and then just go over it with maybe some 2000, and that might just bring it right up. But I'll show you how a bigger piece came up for me. I'll put this one down there, but very, very nice. Okay, this is the piece that I got from the show, and that's how I got it, and it looked really nice. I saw all this, you know, the, if it, the grain was on fire through here, and I thought that's magic. So that's hard burnished with the burnishing oil, and as I say, that's, I spent a fair bit of time on this one, and doesn't it look magic? It's just glorious, and all of these cracks around here, all filled beautifully. There was a bit here in the center, a bit of pith there, and also there was a bit of pith down here. Now what am I gonna do with this? God only knows, <laughs> I've got no idea. Vicky wants me to do both sides and put it on the um, coffee table in the house. And hard burnishing oil apparently you can use on chopping boards and serving boards. So as they say, leave it seven days before you put anything on it. And away you go, what do you reckon? It is so beautiful. Now, I was going to show you something else regarding the, uh, the bench here. Um, this, I, this is something that really surprised me. Let's get these. Uh, I'm going to switch cameras to the main camera. There we go. Transition. Now, these dogs, I'm going to put down through this bench into the original Stanton bench that I've done. So that's the one I did with Peter's Path Guide system. And I'm going to line up 
a hole there. I don't know if you're going to be able to see. So let's go to camera one on its own. There we go. All right. So I've got, I've got one in down there. You can see it. It's all the way through. I'm going to put one in over here. Actually, close-up cam might be best. Let's go for close-up cam. Yep, it'll work fine. Okay, so I'm going to put one in down here. Wherever it is. There. Got it. And I'm going to put one in over here. Like that. And then another one in over here. I'll spin this around to there. Is it going to go? It should do. Yep, straight in. Look at that. I'll bring this camera back so you can see them all in position. So that's all four dogs. Now, that's saying two things to me. It's saying that the... Uh, I'll switch it back again. It's saying that the, uh, the path guide system is fantastically accurate. And also, it's possibly also saying that I have set my CNC machine up to be very accurate as well. So that's fantastic. That's all around. On, and this board is uh, nearly 1200 by 600. So that's pretty good to get those diagonals, per diagonals perfect. And you might be saying, oh, well, that's a bit of a fluke, Dave. Watch this. Where can we go? This one. How's that? Another one. I've got a handle on it because it's easy to pull out that way. In, 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 in. Where do you want me to stop? <laughs> it's, it's doing all of them. Even across the front, which is double layer down below. It's just everyone is perfect. What do you think of that? I was tickled. I only tried doing that this morning. I, you know, you, you, you look at these things. And, Ooh, I don't know if it's going to work. I better not do that on the show. So I thought, was that around it? And had a quick look and I thought, oh, that's brilliant. Okay, what's my next thing I need to look at? What's the time? Time is 10.43. Um, let me have a look here. Looks soft and smooth to Stephen. Very nice. Darren saw the res results of the hard burnishing at the show and bought some. So obviously they impressed me with the finish. Uh, Stephen, what about the... Placard of some, placard of some type. I'm not sure what you mean there. Uh, Peter, large lazy Susan, middle of the dining table. Yeah, oh, I see what you mean. A large placard for that for that piece of wood. I don't know. I don't know. It's one of those things. I've got timber from a few years ago that's just still sitting there, and I haven't used it on purpose because I just I don't want to ruin it. I'm a little bit of a wuss that way. Um, see and see your name in the top section and use it as a hanging advertising sign. That could happen. That could happen. Um, Andrew, just amazing. Peter, another idea for it would be a trophy stand. Barry, Peter would love to see you do that. Oh, wouldn't he ever? Well, if he watches the show, he can see it. Like, I am super impressed as how accurate the Path Guide system is. And he's brought out a second one, but they haven't sent me one over yet to trial. I have asked for one, see what happens. You know, they might turn around and say, oh, Dave, pff, not interested. Well, see what happens. Um, Lost Wits, does anyone have an idea for a sushi train style carousel for a dining table? Wow, that sounds like an interesting idea. Um, right, okay. Uh, maybe I just said it wrong. Ken, sorry. It's 11.44. Yeah, it's on my computer down there. And over there it says a quarter to 12 on the, on the old-fashioned Mickey Mouse clock. You know, it does this kind of stuff. Um, Russ, don't forget to talk about the issues with the black ply. Okay, so this one here, this is what you're talking about, is it, Russ? This is form ply. Now, form ply, when it's manufactured, uh, only has seven laminations, seven layers of plywood. So they're thicker and coarser, and there's probably going to be a few voids there. Now, the thing is, when it's finished dead flat, they also run it through, it's t properly seasoned, they run it through a machine that puts a coating on it. And also the other thing with form ply is the grain on the top goes across the sheet. Uh, which is something that annoyed me a little bit when I found out when I was running this one on the CNC, I was using a spiral up cutter 
And the first one I did, it just tore the crap out of everything. So I had to switch over to a spiral down and then everything was, was fine after that. I'm learning all the time as I'm going through. Um, and, and so once you cut through the surface, drilling holes through it is fine because it's not going to make any difference of one side to the other, one face to the other. Drilling a hole is fine. But when you cut these dados for the uh, anti-slip cushion strip, and also for the T-Track, and you leave it for a little bit before you put those in, it starts to absorb moisture on this face. And as soon as it starts to absorb moisture, it swells the fibers. And when the fibers swell, you get this thing happening. It bowed. And that's what happened to this. So last night, I, I put, this was, this was the cleanest of the two. And you know, it's, it's probably got about a one eighth of an inch bow in the center. And that's not going to worry a lot of people, but for some people that is, that's going to be a huge issue. The marine ply that I'm making the rest of them out of, it does not bow. It's brilliant stuff. It's very, very good. See, when you cut into the surface, it's going to make no difference because the other side is still breathing. It uh, has the same moisture content on both faces. Okay. Uh, an email today. So back in stock. What's not in stock? Um, I'm trying to read through there. Oh, what, the path guide systems? Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. Must be the new path guide system that you guys are talking about. Now, I need to get through a couple more things. And I'm trying to keep reading down through here, through the chat. Well, the chat over here that you guys are saying. And we've done the very Julia. Oh, here's a picture from Julia at the show where she's watching the show from. That's always nice to see. Um, I'm way over the back with um, Alan Williams, who's the bandsaw box maker. So on the show last week, you would have seen him. Uh, now, also, here we go. You want to see a messy... No, before we get to the messy workshop or, or messy draw, this is from Stuart West. Now, Stuart sent in a little idea that he saw on the Wood Whisperer, and I also saw uh, Mark talk about this on his show. Uh, it's how to seal the end of legs on a table. So what's happened, Stuart's drilled uh, five holes there, and then he's gone to putting a, a, uh, a dam around the outside using tape. And then he's filled it up with epoxy, and then he's taken the tape off, and you can see the result. Now, that's a pretty good idea, pardon me, for waterproofing a leg. Um, personally, I would possibly put some kind of a rubber foot underneath it and, uh, and hammer it in. And I think that would get me out of strife, but this, the epoxy system is still pretty good. Uh, okay, thanks to Zim, reading some more stuff. Okay, Gary Wilkins, can Carbotech send me the THBX so I can review it? You know what? Carbotech have, uh, I've, I've been pushing for a long, long, long time let me come back into camera one. I've been pushing a long, long, long time. Now, if you guys know that I work part-time at Carbotech, I've been there for seven years. Hence, I developed an interest in joinery a whole lot more than when I was head of my construction company. And I got to know all the machines and I started doing videos. And, you know, every now and then I'd say to the guys that own Carbotech, you know, have a look, you know, tell me what you think. And it was all, mm -hmm, yeah, good on you, Dave. Thanks for coming. Anyway, finally... They've had a look at the one that I did on the uh, on the thicknesser, and they love it. They absolutely love it because why not? It's a great machine. I love my little TH, uh, whatever it is. So it used to be the CT330X, but now it's this one that uh, Gary's talking about. And I've licensed the video to them. How's that? I, w I was over the moon. They said, Dave, we love it. I said, okay, let's let's talk. So we're talking. That's fantastic. And I'll tell you what, it's only taken me seven years. Um, so I'm over the moon with that. Here we go. Now I'm going to, Gary, if you see the video, they'll, they'll probably start, um, they, may, they may do an email out. I have no idea. But it's linked in there. You go to their website and they've, they've put a link to the video down there as well, which is, you know, I'm over the moon. All right. Now we also need to see down here, Stuart West told me, um, Dave, you know how you asked to send in pictures of a messy drawer. Well, Stuart's mess has gone from his drawer into his dining room. Now, he and his partner live in separate houses. And you want to know why? 
This is in Stuart's dining room. <laughs> oh dear. It's just <laughs> you know what? I think that's uh, that's pretty amazing. That is pretty amazing. Oh, thanks, Chris. Zane, cover tech need to look at what Timbercon do in YouTube and get some ideas. Yeah, possibly, possibly. We'll see what happens. You know, they might talk to me some more. That'd be great. Be fantastic news. Uh, where are we up to now? Cuckoo. I'm reading down through the side here on my little list. Um, trampoline saw stop. Oh, here we go. Saw stop. So down at the show last week, John Lafferty got his slow mo camera out. And I think I can find it. There we go. Let's have a look at this. This is Troy from the United States doing his demonstration. Obviously, I need tattoos because my demonstrations would be a whole lot better if I had tattoos. It just seems to be everyone does it these days, not me. Here we go. Straight in using the rip. Amazing. <laughs> what do you think of that? Every time I see that demonstration, I just, I'm in awe. You know, it's just, it is amazing. Uh, where are we up to? It's uh, around about 5-2. I'm just having a look. Oh, I've got a little demo for you. Here we go. Give me a second. I'm going to set it up. I'm going to pull these out. Tighten that up in there. And then I'll pull it out. That one was a little tight, but the rest are fine. That one, this one, up and out. In a second, maybe I need to put this on. With, um, with the dogs, if you've ever used the path guide system, you'll know that putting a handle in a dog makes it a whole lot easier to remove it. There, see? That was a whole lot easier. That one out and the last one. And then I'm going to take this bench off and put the other one. Whoop, take that one out as well, David. Out, okay. <laughs> Pop that one over there. Right, I'm going to move this camera over a little bit to about there. Now, John has come up with another thing. You can't stop him, can you? He just won't stop. I'm going to switch this. Let me see what we've got there. That, that's probably the best view. I'll switch it over. Transition to there. Uh, well, the saw stop brake will not be able to be retrofitted to other machines. Of course, it would kill the machine. The machines have got to be built strong enough to withstand the force. All right, this guy here. See this? What do you think of that? Magnets on the end. And I'm going to put it in there. Like so. And I'm going to get another dog. And I'm going to put it... No, I'll bring it, I'm going to bring it back this way a bit further. Back to about there. And there. And I'll bring this along a little further here. So you can see what's happening. Uh, and, and, and... I'm going to get my clamp. And slide this down here and a piece of stick wood timber whatever you want to call it now this is a saw guide believe it or not I'm gonna push that against there and just hold it in position it doesn't matter where you put it really lock it in position with that push that down onto there and see this guy here magnetized for a saw so there we go I'm not touching it. My hands are away from it. And we can cut. There we go. Let's see if it's any good. Give me a second. There you go. I don't know if you can see it quite there. It's not too bad. And across that way.
and it does 45s. So if I move this down to there, and then this one to there, and that one to there, and put my clamp down here. And let's see how it goes on a 45. See that? Holding on again. Oh, look at that. That's, again, no hands, da 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 da. It's doing all the work on the magnets. And that up, and let's have a look how accurate that is. So I've got the, I've got the 45 on the combination square right there. I'm going to slide that in. And what do you think? And we do this way. Let's go to um, 90. So I'll put it on here. And we'll slide it down. And on the back. Like so. So John, 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 you keep on coming up with these ideas. John's not being well, he's uh, copped the flu. And uh, him and Julia have both been laid up with that. So he hasn't been on top of things, but I'll tell you what, I thought it was champion effort of him to come to the show last week and he helped out on, on, on a stand. He had some stuff there and I had some stuff there. So he did all that while I helped out on trend stand, trend timbers. And if you're in Australia and you want some wood, go to Trend Timbers. Brilliant. They've got really, really nice uh, selection of timber down there. Uh, where are we up to? It's almost, almost time. Let me have a look. Um, how many plies does your original bench have? Uh, it's around 11, I think. Let's have a quick read. I'm going to go down through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on this one. I think the marine ply... I'll have a quick look on the marine ply one. I've got one here under construction. I love the marine plies. But it just, it's, it's chalk and cheese. Using the marine ply is absolutely magic. So that's the marine ply bench. And you, I can look down that, and that is as straight as a, straight as a tack. Uh, laminations, let me count. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So you can see that on close up cam. There's eleven there. Now it's very thin, it's not a glue strip. You'll see that there's a very thin, the, the coarse, heavy, thick uh, laminations going across the board, but down the length of the 2.4 meters or the 8 feet. It's, um, it's, it's brilliant. Uh, birch plywood, I have no idea lab works. Can't help you with that at all. Birch plywood in Australia is horribly expensive. The best ply that you're going to get that's close to birch will be hoop pine. Um, yeah, I don't know if Trend Timbers deliver or not, Ken. Okay, the job site saw really bounces around. Well, I'll tell you what, you would too if you'd been stopped from 4,000 RPM to nothing. Okay. <laughs> It's, it's insane. Um, Joe, Moo is it? M-I-O-U-S is a Moo? I th possibly. Let me know if I've got the pronunciation correct. Um, change the name of the show to the Dave and John show. Well, he keeps things interesting, doesn't he? It's, it's amazing to see what John comes up with. He, because he's not, not been very well, he, uh, he has all this time to think. So he sits there pondering things and he gets it right. Cabinet Timbers in Port Melbourne, Victoria. Okay, Tim, thank you for letting uh, let uh, LabWorks know that. All right, John Lara, I just think we can all say we got to see Yellow Box Shed and Dave Stanton Bench when they started out before they became a worldwide company. Okay, uh, look, I think that's going to be about it for today, guys. Thanks so much for coming and uh, hanging out with me. And I'm hoping that my little demonstration on the hard burnishing oil 
uh, although it was brief and I had to condense it down a lot. And so Jim would let you know as well. Jim's very much in, um, in touch with what organ oil products do. He would understand that uh, you know, it takes a little bit more time to run through all the grades and to get leave the oil the right amount of time. I pushed it. But you can see on the one I did over there how magic it looks. It's just beautiful. Um, what else can I say? I think that's about it. 12.01. And again, thanks everyone for coming. I think I'll do the finish up now. And uh, I shall see everyone next week. I'm going to switch over to here. Put the specs on so I can see the screen. There it is over there. And also, thank you again so much for all of my... Uh, Sponsors uh, via Patreon, Patreon, what you do for me is fantastic. I, I'm so appreciative of it. And uh, yeah, if you if you want to jump in, by I, I I would love it. Thank you so much. All right, here we go, and I shall see you all next week. Look after yourselves. Be good. Be nice to each other, and I shall see you later. Bye. <music>